Hello everybody, Stuart from Riku here. Today I want to talk about some image AI and also sort of the ethics and everything behind sort of buying and selling prompts and why I tend to think that if you are using image AI, buying and selling prompts is pretty much nonsense because you can literally just look at an image and type that into something like DALI and get the output that you could get from buying a prompt. So let's get into it and let's look at a few things today. So one of the first things that I wanna look at today is this website called the Dallary Gallery. You've gotta bear in mind when we are talking about image AI and sort of manipulating different image AIs, Obviously, DALI from OpenAI is sort of the most well-known. It's the most sort of got a buzz about it. But there are multiple other companies and also open source projects which are launching, which are doing a great thing within the space. And a lot of the principles in creating prompts for image AI works across most of them. Generally, that involves going and writing in your prompt, say a rabbit sat on a table, and then you put some description into what style you want. So then you could say like, in the style of, you know, in a cyberpunk style, in the style of Van Gogh, in the style of Monet, you know, you could use artists, you can use different settings, different sceneries um, to do that. You can say long shot, you can say over the shoulder shot, you know, different sort of things. You'd say a photo of a rabbit to get it more like photorealistic. So once you learn all of these little nuances with image AI, it becomes incredibly easy to get the output that you want fairly quickly. Obviously, a lot of image AI is pretty uh, limited in some regards. Uh, one of the things that I often see when I'm playing with models is it can't get arms right, it can't get hands right, it can't really get the basics of um, the human anatomy right outside of a face. So that's always fun to look at and play with as we continue to dive deeper into the image AI space. But what I like about this website, the DALI Gallery, is they have the DALI 2 prompt book, and this is completely open and free to use. You can come here, you can hit click view the full book online, or you, or you can download the PDF. Um, and what you get is you get 82 pages explaining what prompts are, how to do different prompts, um, and a bunch of other stuff. It's super cool and I will link this down below because I think everybody should really look at something like this when they are just getting started into image generation because it helps a ton. You know, you can see how by putting different emotional words you can get different outputs. You can see uh, different styles, um, vaporware, post-apocalyptic, cybernetic, etc. Photography stuff is really cool, you know, extreme close-up, close-up, medium shot, blah, 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 blah. And you can go through and you can see all of these different techniques to get the image that you require. So this leads me to another point, which is generally, should you buy a prompt for image generation where you could probably figure it out within two to three runs yourself. And you'll probably have more fun in doing that. So the price of DALI at the moment is about, well, it's $15 for 115 generations and you get 15 free every single month. I anticipate that price coming down quite considerably, fairly quickly. OpenAI are currently scaling up to over a million users, so they really want to give everybody on their waitlist a chance to play with this technology. Once they've done that, I'm sure they're gonna run some analytics, see what the heavy usage is, see what the heavy usage isn't, and come up with some pricing that would be more favorable for more generations. So at the moment, you're looking at about 13 cents uh, per generation. And for that, you get four images, and you can generally sort of understand and see how you can use your generations to create something that you need. And 
having uh, other people posting stuff on social media, Twitter, Facebook, wherever that you can see and replicating prompts is a very easy way to do this. And if you also see something in sort of a prompt marketplace, then you can also reverse engineer this as well. You know, we're a big proponent of reverse engineering text prompts and we've done that. We've shown how you can do that from Jasper, from Copy AI, and we're gonna show other tools in the future. Very, very simple and easy to do within Riku. And image prompts are also very easy to do. So if we come in to this website that has appeared where you can do your, um, image generation, which is here. Um, and they are selling Dali prompts and you can buy this prompt for $1.29, but there's nothing really unique about it at all, right? So if I wanted a hacker animal, what I could do is I could say, okay, so what are these animals doing? It's a rabbit. It's got a hoodie on. It's looking at a computer. The only thing that I haven't put in my prompt is the sunglasses, which I could add. So for me to create this prompt myself, what would I be looking at doing? One, I'd be saying, uh, rabbit hacker sitting at a laptop in a hoodie with sunglasses. I've left the sunglasses out of mine, but you can see the generations that I've got. And then for the style, I've put digital art, which I think looks somewhat better than some of these uh, some of these painting styles. But if you wanted to say in the style of a painting, you'd get something like this. But you can see here what we've got in our Dali collection. So we've done a couple, we've done digital art. And you've got to remember from these, we got four outputs. So every four outputs costs you 13 cents. So this was my first go at this rabbit hacker sitting at a laptop in a hoodie, digital art. The only thing I left out was sunglasses and I could have put that in if I had thought to include that. So this image is pretty cool. The second image of the four, the third image of the four, and the fourth image of the four. So this one's more dark and more like a humanoid sort of rabbit. I really like this one. It's a, it's a super cool image. And then I thought, okay, Let's try if we put in 3D render at the end because 3D render tends to make things look more interesting, more sort of lifelike in a way. So what we did was we added that. We left digital art in and we just put 3D render at the end. And you've got this very cool image of a rabbit with like the red tinge and I really like this one. Second one the third one, and the fourth one. So from my Dali account, those eight images would have cost me 26 cents to generate. And you'll notice when I include digital art and 3D render, you somewhat confuse the AI into what style to create. And you tend to get a mixture of both. So if I wanted to look at 3D render without the digital art, I take digital art out. So that was the final one that I did where I removed digital art and I just put 3D render and you get something like this. So this is super cool. You see how it's more like a, you know, like a, like a leather jacket, leather hoodie type style um, with the rabbit. The second one, the third one and the fourth one. So this one even has the sunglasses when I didn't specify. So this is super interesting and it's just something to really think. You can pay money to use someone else's prompt, which if you want to do, by all means do that, or you can play around and probably get that prompt within two to three generations. And I really don't think that it requires much more than that. Image AI is very much say what you see or say what you want to see, add a style on the end, and most of the time you're gonna get something pretty good out. There isn't anything more to it than that. I spent 
five minutes doing these three generations, which were, what, 13 cents a pop. So that was 39 cents total. Um, I don't have to buy a prompt for $1.29. And I had fun doing it. It was interesting. There's images from each batch, which I could use for a project if this is something that I wanted to use. And I could adapt this as I need. You know, it could be a rabbit, rabbit, hacker or rabbit gangster sitting at a bus or you know being a bus driver or whatever so once you get the basics of a prompt you can then adapt it to your needs this is also something that we're showing in riku and um, with our community showcase where people can come in and create prompts share them with the community other people can see how they were constructed and they can use them in their own projects um I've seen a lot of discussion about sort of these marketplaces from different parts of the AI community. And I think really giving people the ability to pay to, to pay for prompts is probably not the way to go. The only way, the only reason that it could be getting a little bit of traction at the moment is because the price of using such generations is so high. But I imagine in the future and actually very quickly, the price will probably decrease. So as the price gets less and people can do more and more generations and hit that generate button more and more, play around more and more, experiment and enjoy this technology for all it has to offer. Um, I believe that such uh, businesses will become irrelevant in the future anyway. Um, OpenAI are just one of a few with these image models. DALI is obviously very impressive, but obviously Midjourney is also doing some very good stuff. There is PixelMind, which is also doing some good stuff. And you have Stable Diffusion um, releasing open source models, hopefully later this week. So it's a very exciting time to be involved in image AI. And whilst Riku is mainly all about text AI, we do keep a very close eye on it as we'd love to bring some of these image models within the Ricky platform in the future. And one more announcement before I go. We are going to be talking with Adam Levine, who is the CEO of 330 AI Innovations, which run the pixelmind.ai model. It's something that I've been playing around with in beta. It's very impressive and it can create some really awesome images. Um, and some of the images are definitely on par, if not better than stuff that I've got from Dali. So this is very cool. We're hopeful to do this chat within the next couple of weeks. I'll be putting a notice out to the Riku community to gather questions, gather feedback, anything that anyone wants to know. If you are interested in image AI and have a burning question, feel free to leave it in the comments below and we will include it in the chat if it makes sense to do so. So I hope this video has been helpful. Image AI should be playful. I think people should be able to play and enjoy and build what they want. And I think you can do that without paying for prompts. Paying for AI is enough, I believe. So yeah, that's all I've got to say. Thank you.